and we're back. Okay, so we've talked about positive integer powers. We've talked about what it means to raise something to the zero power. Now the final step, well actually not the final step because we haven't talked about fractions yet, but the last of our integer powers would be negative integer powers. So let's talk about it. What does it mean to have a negative exponent? What if you have x to the negative 2? Again, just like I did with zero powers, there's a couple of different ways for me to explain this to you. Uh, let's do it this way first. If I have x to the fourth over x to the sixth, right? Our quotient rule that you learned was that if you have common base, you subtract the exponents when you divide. So this is x to the four minus six which is x to the negative 2. So this particular fraction here, x to the 4th over x to the 6th, is x to the negative 2. But if you remember, I also taught you a different way to deal with this. And that was when we have the quotient rule, we take the smaller number, subtract it from the bigger number, and put the answer where the bigger number was. So 6 minus 4 is 2, and we're going to put that answer on the bottom because that's where the larger exponent was. That's x squared on the bottom. And we also talked about what happens when you eliminate everything from, from the numerator of a fraction. What's left over? A 1. So we have 1 over x squared. We can also show that by writing out our x's. x to the 4th is x times x times x times x, and x to the 6th is 6x's. Six 4, 5, 6. And we talked about the fact that you have, if you have a factor that's the same top and bottom, you can cancel them. 2, 3, 4. So what have we got left? We crossed out everything on the top. That leaves us with a 1. And on the bottom is x squared. So what are we saying? We just showed a number of different ways to prove that x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared. Okay? We can write that as an algebra rule. Let's do that. x to the negative a equals 1 over x to the a. Negative exponents are the reciprocal of positive exponents. That's the important thing. Negative exponents do not give you negative answers. So for example, if I had 2 to the negative 3, let me rewrite that. That's not real clear. 2 to the negative 3. Our rule says that's going to be 1 over 2 to the third. It is the reciprocal of the positive. Here's our negative. Here's our positive. It's the reciprocal. It's 1 over that. So 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. Not negative 8. Not negative 8. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. So let's you look at a couple of other examples. What if I have um, O m to the negative ninth? That is 1 over m to the ninth. Got it? Okay, we can show this a different way too. Let's talk about 2 to the negative 3. Um, and I'm going to use a technique that I used in the last video to talk about zero powers. Remember we did this? If you looked at that video? We said 2 to the first was 2, 2 to the second was 4, 2 to the third was 8, 2 to the fourth was 16. Okay, and we said 2 to the zero was 1. And we got that by saying that as we go to the left here, we're dividing by 2 each time. 16 divided by 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Well, what if we continue that pattern? 1 divided by 2 is a half, isn't it? And then what do we do when we cut a half in half? We get a fourth. A fourth divided by 2 is an eighth. Well, but guess what? I can rewrite 1 half as 1 over 2 to the first. I can rewrite 2 to the negative 2 as 1 over 2 squared. I can rewrite 2 to the negative 3rd as 1 over 2 to the 3rd. So again, I hope you can see 
that the negative exponent is the reciprocal of the positive. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 to the third. Which leads us to a question, and that question is, what if, what if the negative exponent is in the denominator to begin with? What if I have 1 over x to the minus 3? 1 over x to the minus 3. Well, there's a lot of different ways to take a look at this. I'm just going to show you two different ways to take a look at it. One way to take a look at it is to realize that we can rewrite the number 1 using the base x, can't we? How would I write 1 using a base of x? How do I get 1? Anything to the 0 power is 1, isn't it? So I can rewrite 1 as x to the 0, can't I? Then I can use my quotient rule. x to the 0, and we subtract, if we're doing our quotient rule, minus a minus 3, can't we? At 0, minus a minus is plus 3, x to the third. So I've just said that 1 over x to the minus 3 is x to the, whoops, x to the positive 3. Is there a different way of looking at it? Sure. I can rewrite, I'm coming back to this now, I can rewrite x to the minus 3 as 1 over x to the third, can't I? Isn't that what x to the negative 3 is? So what have I got? I've got 1 divided by 1 over x to the third. And I hope you remember from many, many years ago that when you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to take the reciprocal. This is 1 over 1, isn't it? We get x to the third over 1, x to the third. So I've just proven two different ways that 1 over x to the minus 3 is x to the third. And that's kind of something you should probably have been able to guess anyway. So let's write it as an algebra rule. 1 over x to the negative a is x to the a. And again, that should make sense because we said that the negative exponent is a reciprocal of the positive. So if it's in the bottom to begin with, when we make this a reciprocal, doesn't it end up on the top? Sure does. This is x to the a over 1. Okay? So, is there a shortcut? Sure there is. And is there anything, anything wrong with shortcuts? Absolutely not. So let's take a look at it. The rule is this. When you have a negative exponent, rewrite the negative exponent on the other side of the fraction as a positive exponent. That's all you got to do. Take that negative exponent, make it positive, and rewrite that base with the now positive exponent on the other side of the fraction. So what if I had x to the negative 2 y to the fifth over x to the third y to the negative 7. Anything that's positive, anything that already has a positive exponent is going to stay where it is. Anything that has a negative exponent attached to it is going to become positive, the po exponent will become positive and move to the other side of the fraction. And I hope you can see that from our other two examples up here, our rules. Okay. Here, this was on the top, wasn't it? We changed it to a positive and moved it to the bottom. Here, the negative was on the bottom. We changed it to a positive and moved it to the top. Do you see what we did? So now we're just making kind of a general rule out of that. All right, so the things that are positive are my y to the fifth. That's a positive exponent. And on the bottom, I have an x to the third that's positive. My other two are negative. So this x to the negative 2 is going to become an x to the positive 2, and I'm going to move it down to the denominator when it becomes positive. That's how we deal with negative exponents. And this y to the negative 7 is going to move up to the pop as a y to the 7. And then now what have we got? We've just got our product rule, don't we? 
y to the fifth times y to the seventh, five plus seven is y to the twelfth. And on the bottom we've got x to the fifth. Right? The thing you need to be very, very careful about with negative exponents is when um, negative exponents appear to be attached to something they're not. If I say 3y to the negative 2 over x squared, some of you will be tempted to move the 3 down with the y. But is the negative 2, is the power of negative 2 referring to the 3? No. That negative 2 is only a power of y. So the only thing that would move is the y squared down the bottom. And the other two things would stay where they are. The x squared would stay there, and the 3 would stay up here. Okay, so be careful. What if I wanted to have both the 3 and the y to the negative 2 power? Well, in that case, wouldn't you see it like this? Sure would. Sure would. In that case, if we had the same kind of problem but it was in parentheses, the negative 2 now refers to both the 3 and the y. So I could actually move that entire thing downstairs here to the positive 2 power, x squared. What's left if I get rid of everything on the top? That's right, it's a 1. And then we'd square everything, wouldn't we? What's 3 squared? 3 squared is 9. And we've got a y squared there and an x squared. And just to be conventional, or just to write things in standard form, algebra, we like to write things in alphab alphabetical order in algebra, so we'd do x squared, y squared would be a better answer. Does that all make sense? I hope so. Okay. The last thing I want to point out to you is that all the other rules work for negatives too. They all work for negatives as well. Okay. If I have um, x to the fourth, y to the negative two, to the negative three power. If I'm doing a power of a power, or in this case the power of a quotient, the same rule applies. You can still multiply as you would normally do. So I have x to the four times negative three is negative twelve, negative two times negative three is positive six. And then if we were to simplify this, the y to the 6 would stay where it is. And where would the x to the negative 12 go? It would become a positive, and it would move. This is over 1, isn't it? It would move to the denominator. We'd have over x to the 12th. Got it? So that's negative exponents. Again, the rule for negative exponents, the simple way to remember it is that we're going to rewrite the negative exponent as a positive and move it to the other side of the fraction. If it's in the numerator, move it down to the denominator when you make the exponent positive. If it's in the denominator, move it to the numerator when you make the exponent positive. Got it? Sure hope so. In our next video, we're going to do some complicated examples using zeros and positive and negative integer exponents. But that's coming up next. Thanks.